10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Need I say more, but welcome to the jungle, baby. Yes, that's a power hour. We are live here tonight. I am Slamming Sam. I am one of your hosts. My boy Lee is down in Texas taking it all in at the Texas Motorplex. A lot to talk about with that event, but got a special guest that's coming on tonight. He is no stranger to Competition Plus. He is no stranger to the power hour for sure and everyone knows him but i'm gonna bring on the man the myth the legend my co-host riding along in the saddle tonight uh we're bringing him back two weeks in a row so without further ado mr bobby b bobby bennett what's going on tonight hey you better read my contract there i'm not a guest i'm your co-host tonight there mr welcome to the jungle this guy, welcome I mean, we're to in the studio, and he's listening to Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses, and I'm listening to Fight the Power by the Isley Brothers. What's messed up with this situation? Man, look, look, look uh, I can honestly say that, and with the show that we have tonight and everything that's going on in the drag racing community, Welcome to the Jungle and a little Detroit Rock City is a little fitting for everything that's going on with, you know, with the stampede right now, the ten- the stampede of speed down there in texas welcome to the jungle we have officially i can honestly say this we have officially opened the gate to what drag racing heaven looks like if i can say so myself absolutely i mean leave it to billy to do it on the grand stage and and ever since he was a funny car racer in the 70s and he rolled through with the 18 wheeler with a funny car inside or built an all concrete a uh, quarter mile, that's just the Billy Meyer style. would expect no less. And like the great song says, everything is bigger and better in Texas. And having family from there and living there a few years in my life, I can honestly say Texas is not holding back at all right now. They are definitely standing up to what their name has become. And, and I mean, that's what it truly is. Uh, Stan, to answer your question, Monday Morning Racer is live. From the Motorplex, he will be jumping on at some point today. I know I was just talking with him via text when I was rocking out before the show, and he was saying that uh, the Pro Mods, they were just dragging the track before Pro Mods was going on. So he's doing some filming, but yes, he will pop in when time allows, but he's down there getting the content, and that's what it's all about, and we're going to talk about it here, have some guests on that are, you know, down there involved with this, but like so much to talk about, uh, Bobby. I know you and I talked a little bit earlier in the week, and uh, or, or I should say late last week. And you're bringing back the legends. I saw some sneak peeks of stuff that I got in the email. So talk about the legend and what Competition Plus has got going on right now. Well, I got to tell you, uh, uh, Lee is making this a two for one deal. He's down there visiting his cousin Leatherface down there, the dude with the chainsaw. That's his cousin. Third cousin, actually. But anyway, <laughs> that's my feeble attempt at humor. Uh, but anyway, yes, Legends of Series getting ready to kick off again. Uh, we're going to resume season six uh, with the great Kenny Bernstein. Uh, and we should have a preview coming up here in about five days uh, of the uh, next Legends. And right behind Kenny Bernstein, we've got Billy Meyer. Then we've got Ed the Ace McCullough, the redo. So. Uh, we got some pretty big things on the horizon for Legends of Series, as well as storytellers. We got some new faces coming in. You know, and that's what it's all about, to continue to tell these past stories and even the future stories. And that's one thing that's great about this show is that we're able to do that and bring in everything fun and and have a different atmosphere. And Bobby, since I got you on, you know, we can kind of chit chat here in the front part of the show. Uh, you know, as we do have a great show, but, you know, from you looking at, I guess, this idea of what this show was supposed to be, um, and then giving the rings to Lee and I, uh, I guess, yeah, one of us do need to have on glasses tonight. There you go. Uh, but yeah, giving the rings to Lee and I, <laughs> did you ever expect for us to give this different twist 
uh, kind of a late night show, give our own feel, have different segments? Like, did you ever expect this show to be this? Yes. Yes. Uh, I knew from the first show that we did, we had the two perfect guys for the, for the show. Uh, you guys were, were doing very good on the podcast stuff. I just, I knew all you needed was just a little bit bigger stage and you would shine. And, uh, well, I'm patting myself on the back because you guys have knocked it out of the park. You continue to knock it out of the park. And from the viewership that continues to grow, uh, they agree you've been knocking it out of the park. We've got the the whole team for the Competition Plus Power Hour, and and, and I guess we say corporate America is starting to take notice uh, of the growing uh, following as well as the, the absolute show. I mean, look how many articles we're pulling out of the show now. That's the that's the uh, that's the sign of a good show when you can pull articles out of the content of it. And I always told people when we started legends, the series, you know, uh, back in 14, 13, 14 or whatever, I said, please look past my uh, shortcomings as a video editor and look at the content. The content is King. And, uh, that that's what you guys have been able to do. You, we, we brought in a great team together and, and we've hit the ground running. I couldn't be any more proud than I am of you guys. No, we have, we definitely appreciate that. And then Lee just said that he heard, I don't know what it was that you said. Uh, he says, I'm watching, but due to the delay, I've heard the timing issues. I heard that. Uh, and then back to filming, he said, we got another question coming in, Bobby, since you're on here, everyone's going to throw them to you. So here you go, Bobby. Stan's asking, hey, Bobby, are you going to pay for the boys to go to Vegas? I think they want the crew back in Vegas, Bobby. How do you feel about that? I would love to. We just got to see see what the budget's like. I would love to uh, shoot. If I had my way, I'd have you guys at every race. Trust me, it's not a matter of not wanting to, but you got to be you got to be responsible when we do this. You know that that we're going to be around for the long haul. And, and trust me, we we are shaking the bushes, rattling the bushes to get the budget, but. You know, we have to race within our means right now, but there's going to be a day. I always tell people, remember, Jaws was once a baby fish. He didn't just pop out of his mama and start biting the crap out of people. He learned how to swim and he learned to move around and then he started swallowing people whole. And that's what we're going to do one day. Baby steps, baby steps. And that's right. Um, and I, I kind of want to just start diving in right here. It says, uh, Andy Carter has raised the bar for the rest of the tracks to attempt what he's achieving. I, let's just jump right into it, Bobby. I mean, there's there's no reason not to. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. But this week, hands down, you have to talk about what's going on at this track. Will we see this? The first question I have for you, Bobby, and in this whole talk, will we see other tracks step up to pretty much make drag racing a a fair week. I mean, if you if you really look at it, this is kind of like a fair, right? They're having an extended fair week at their drag strip. Do you think we will start to see more tracks get involved with this? Well, I think I think coming out, if there had been back to back to back multiple races, I don't know that they would have been able to pull this off with the same uh same intensity that that this one has gone having the week off uh, helped everybody to recharge their batteries and come in running strong. And, and I think it just depends on the venue and uh, what what can be built around that time uh, for that venue. Uh, this year has been a pretty it's been a pretty tough year, right? Uh, once we got to uh, to Topeka, I believe it was, and Brainerd and went back to back back. No buffer between the U S nationals, it's been pretty challenging and taxing on the teams. So this week off allowed them to recharge their battery. So, uh, I think it works perfect for, for the Texas motorplex. Will it work perfect for every other track? I can't say the same thing. And I agree with you there. Like, you know, I don't think it should happen at every event and, and, and no way am I saying that, but I think now like 
Lee and I have talked about it over and over. I think Vegas should be the last race because you have Vegas going into SEMA. You know, so why not? We're already there. Racing fans from across the world are going to be there for SEMA. So why not already extend that and make Vegas your home race, announce everyone on the SEMA stage while you're there, but make that your big grand weekend, right? Do one in Vegas. Now you've got one in Texas. Uh, you know, make Indy, you know, give a break between before that Indy week and let Indy be another one. You know, why not make the big go bigger? I mean, you know, it, it's just like <clears throat> the way I look at it. You look at the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is the granddaddy of them all. Right. Everyone says that across the board when it comes to when it comes to football. But why not make Indy even bigger? So. That that's my thing. Um, a little controversy since we're giving so much praise well, to well, Texas let me right now. Okay. Let me go back. okay. We we will be getting back our Indy, uh, the the Indy that we had before the China virus was unleashed on us. Uh, that it uh, where it starts on Wednesday with stock super stock and comp, and then Thursday we'll have stock eliminator class eliminations. Friday we'll have super stock class eliminations. Then we'll have shootout uh, on Saturday for the or, or Sunday for the funny cars, and then we'll uh, have racing on Monday. So yeah, we do get our Indy back, and, and I'm glad. Uh, it, it's kind of tough when they do one or two sessions and then go right into class eliminations on Wednesday and try to cram it all in one day. Uh, and Saturday, sorry, the Jegs All Stars, and then the. Uh, the funny car shootout. So uh, we are getting our, uh, we're getting our Indy back. No, and, and I mean, that's good. A uh, little controversy going down in Texas right now. Uh, I may have read an article on a place where you can believe what you read. And well, that is Competition Plus. If you, if you read the article, we just pointed out, we didn't, we didn't, you know, if I'm going to throw my opinion out, I'm going to put it in an editorial or whatever. I, my job as a journalist is to present the facts. Uh, you know, uh, something that's lost in today's journalism by the mainstream media, we don't tell you how you're supposed to think. We present the facts and let you decide on your own what you think. Now, there was a controversy uh, that, that dates back to last year, uh, you know, between, uh, you know, the Texas Motorplex which has all the right in the world to switch whatever timing system they want to switch. And they did. And, but when it come, came back time for the, the NHRA event, the NHRA's official timing system is CompuLink. Well, CompuLink said, we're not going to be there to service the event because it's not, not our wiring going into that. Now we'll come in here and we'll rewire the timing system that is compatible and of course, the NHRA opted against it. That which that's their choice too. Uh, now, something goes wrong. Whose fault is it? Well, uh, I I say that Billy Meyer has put up a lot of stuff, and it's up to the NHRA to make sure the show runs smoothly. You make your decision off of that. Keeping it clean, but throwing a little controversy. I like it. See, that's what's great. You come on. Like, Lee, Lee, I think, would have said it a little different, but but that's funny. Uh, Top Fuel 173. Is Lee riding a bull? I don't know. I mean, I've seen already Dustin Lynch. They had a concert there. They had bull riding. Uh, Stevie Fast Jackson had something else we need to talk about. Laying the smack down. I mean, can't really say he's laying the smack down, but winning by, I think it was a foul. Um, but still, 140K richer, I mean, you can't be mad at that when the guy comes and lays it down. Just the whole atmosphere, the light, the glamour, having the one and the only Mr. Burnout himself, Al Tucci, on the ones and twos. I mean, they like it's seriously the atmosphere down there is just unbelievable right now. I mean, they, they, Beautiful they, smoky burnout. And here he comes pulling up to the lanes with that <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. It does not get any better than, like you said, Al Tucci on on the horn, just giving it to you. And, and you know, he is. Um, 
uh, getting a text from Elon. Um, he does all of our scheduling and booking. So thank you for that, Elon. He's telling us who's coming on and live from different places. It's awesome to have that. Uh, but who knows if Lee is going to write a bull? I know when we um, had a Not few other people have on a talking about bull or something. <laughs> Yeah, a I mini mean, bull, you know, baby bull. What's what's those Shetland ponies? Do they have a Shetland <laughs> bull? <laughs> He's riding a little sheep. Uh, but you know, it, it it would be nice. Um, I think this this right here, um, Gainesville. See, and this is it, Tom. I'm glad you said this. This brings me back to that point of the tracks that I think should have this, Bobby. I think Gainesville at the beginning of the year because it's the kickoff for the year. You should start the year. I, you know, you have a big party at the beginning of the school year, it's right? When you go break. back to college. It's spring it, break. It, spring yeah, break. probably is. So, yeah, you might as well have Gainesville should have one, which I think you have that with the, you know, uh, the mini test session and you have West Bucks event. You have all these different events leading up to it. So you might as well have one there. I think I don't Norwalk definitely deserves one, but I think also a great place to have one is Brainerd yeah. just because Brainerd Brainerd gives you so much I mean you're right there on Red Rock you've got the amphitheater right there it's just I think it would bring a lot more people to that race and make that that race a little bit more special so I I really think that um, other things that are coming up and I'm really excited about this is I got a call from a friend to go and do my first PDRA race uh, I did drop that information. There was a kind of a press release uh, this weekend. I will be going next weekend to Virginia for the first time to go help out with some PDRA racing. So I, you know, that's news to you, Bobby. I didn't tell you that earlier uh, when we talked on the phone. I got to keep some surprises. So to all the PDRA people out there, yes, I will see you for the first time very, very, very soon. I'm super excited about that. Um, Bring your just musket. To see some different. Just Bring to your musket, see some different up, races. Fighting up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am not a Wolverine. I know last week I had zero hair on my face because I was repping hockey, and yeah, like I mean, shave and it comes back, man. No, I'm not. Um, uh, no one can afford to drive to Arizona, let alone stay for a weekend. I don't know what that's about. What are we going to Arizona for? I don't know. I don't think. I don't, well, well, that wouldn't work because that goes the week after Pomona. I mean, you go right from Pomona to Phoenix. So, you know, I, I just don't know. I, uh, California's in a world all by itself, but I didn't have to tell you that. You already know that. But I yeah. was from, I used to live there. So, yes, I know California is its own beast. Looking good, Sam. Looking forward to seeing you. Yes. If you guys see, and that's another thing, Bobby, and we want to thank you for this because a lot of people, see Lee and I now and they're like I know that guy guys do not guys and girls out there do not be scared to come up to us we love every bit of it and it it you know it just continues to fuel the fire to what we've got going on to know that you guys are watching from different parts different regions and everything like that Bobby I know we've been yakking it up a little bit I see someone down there and he doesn't know that he's gonna actually come on and say hi give his uh quick two cents about what is going on in his world. So hopefully he does not run away from the camera, but we're gonna bring him on right now. Well, that was quick. <laughs> well, I don't know what happened there. We've got him. No, I'm not Billy Meyer. You brought me up too early. I know. No, we didn't bring you in too early. We can't see you, so you gotta turn your camera on. I'm not, I'm not a Hall of Famer or Motorplex co-owner. What is going on here? We can't see you. We can hear you. Everyone, this is Elon Warner. He does a lot of PR stuff. He is helping us with the show with booking. But, Elon, we cannot see you, so I'm going to drop you out. I just wanted to see and get okay. your, I guess, idea of what's going on. We'll drop you out and bring you back. All right. Like I said, it was a total surprise because I just you wanted to, hook. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, Bobby, what else do we need to talk about in the competition plus world in drag racing world that you think we should bring up right now? Well, as far as news, you know, the, the great news that Mike Green will be returning next year with Justin Ashley. 
uh, that's that's going to be a good team. Uh, they're already a good team, and, and they're a contender uh, for the championship. Uh, if you haven't seen the incredible crash footage of Kevin Rivenbark uh, when he crashed at the PDRA event at Galat, uh, go on and read the great article by Thomas Pope and everything and how he ended up racing despite crashing his car. Uh, th- those are a couple of the good stories that we've got working, you know, on, on competition plus. And, uh, you know, of course the, the CompuLink uh, issue that that's there. It's just news. You make your decision. Uh, again, we at competition plus are not like the mainstream media where we, we, we present stuff and then tell you how you ought to think. We just present the facts and let you believe what you want to believe and, I tell you what you can believe is what you read on our site. So uh, that's, you know, that's it. And that's what it's all about, Bobby, is just believing what you can read and, and then leaving it for everyone to make their own opinions. I think, you know, in today's society, uh, we have so many news outlets that it's forced down your throat of this is what it is. And if you don't believe j- just this, then you are incorrect. Um, but I mean, like you said, so much going on, um, in- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The great social media meltdown. Oh, That's I just saw I was literally, <laughs> Jim wants to talk about the great social media meltdown. Greatest moments of my life. I went and sat down in my chair and took a nap. Man, I, I didn't see- there. It's there. I've been so busy at work and I'm not actually trying to say that I've, you know, but I was so busy yesterday and today with work that I didn't really notice it until I like went on. I tried to check it and I'm like, huh, maybe it's my Wi-Fi or something. I don't know. And I got off, but you know, I, from what I can see is a lot of people, you know, were unplugging stuff, plugging stuff back in. And you know what? I'm glad it kind of happened. It was a reset for everyone to realize that, you know, how much we depend on social media. But then again, for people like you and I, Bobby, that's how we get out to the masses is a social media. So what I have a question. What would you do right now if they took away our Facebook or our stream yards or, or, you know, our social media platforms? How would what way would you try to connect with the target audience? We'd figure a way to work it through Competition Plus. But, you know, again, uh, Facebook, that's a totally different monster. It's a totally different thing. And uh, I love it and hate it all in the same the same motion. You know, I, I love the fact that, uh, that it's a, a, a great platform to get the news out. But I also realized in, in reading some of the comments on, on, on Facebook that intelligence has a ceiling. But when it comes to dumbassery, the sky's the limit. <laughs> hey, people are saying problem. Texas. People are saying Texas needs a uh, two races. People are saying you know people would have to fight and argue in person. We're gonna try something again here just to see if it works. But the lighting's there. He is. There he is. Oh, he look! Look, he froze he on froze. us. Froze. How do you freeze in Texas? I thought that place was hot. Well, no, it happened earlier this year. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're trying to talk to him, and as soon as we try and talk to him, he's like, I don't want to be on the screen. I was trying to get Elon in here just to give us a glimpse of what he is experiencing down there, but who knows? Um, Yeah, Hank said I reported that uh, John Force kissed Ron Caps, and it was true, and, uh, (laughs) you know, uh, he said he was going to kiss Hagen before Hagen got the COVID. He said he, he, he would kiss him. He didn't think he'd get any rashes or anything. <laughs> he was going to try to kiss oh. Hagen. Who knows? All right, let's talk a little points right now before we get back into everything. looks like um, having some technical difficulties down there at the Motorplex. It's probably because there's so many people there. But we're going to talk a little points right now. Here's your point standing for top fuel. What do you what do you think about the top fuel ranks right now, Bobby? The Capco boys are obviously, you know, 
taking charge and I mean they're doing what they need to do right after that. And number two, you got Brittany Force. Number three, you got Billy Torrance. You got Mike, who had a phenomenal performance last week. And then rounding out the top five, you have Justin Ashley. What do you what do you think about our top five right now and top fuel? Well, I think it's really going to be a Steve Torrance, Brittany Force battle. But I think if anybody could run the table, it could be Billy Torrance. But he might be the reluctant champ, reluctant champion if he does win it. Uh, Justin Ashley, all, all the way down to Justin Ashley, I believe, is very much in the game. And all it takes is to get on a hot streak, and and it could be nasty. And see, and 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 I agree with you at a standpoint there, Bobby. But then I have to say this. You have Antron Brown sitting at number seven. You have Leah Pruitt uh, sitting at number six. You have Justin Ashley sitting at five. I, honest, honest prediction right here, I see Justin Ashley and Antron Brown stepping up this week big. I'm going to predict that that's going to be our final down in Texas. I know that the Capco boys are going to want to take this race because, you know, it's, it's who they are. Um, but I predict a Justin Ashley, Antron Brown final this week, uh, just simply because they have continued to work. They've continued to show. I think it's going to be a close semifinal race between um, Antron Brown and Mike to get in that. Yes, I think you're going to see a number one qualifier again from Brittany just because what she's done, her track record record has proven it. But again, like Brian Lone said, and this is no shot at anyone, that it doesn't matter what you do on practice. It doesn't matter what you do in batting practice. It matters how you perform in the game. Chris Bryant, some uh, California kid who hit home runs year after year after year, he can hit home runs in batting practice. But if he's not doing what Fernando Tatis is doing in the game, it doesn't matter. I bet so, you Brittany little... does not qualify number one. Okay. I I'm just saying. I'm going off of history. If history repeats itself, that's what I see. Oh, my God. Did you hey, not see what so Mike I, Salinas had? I did. Okay. I, and I, I told you guys, I think he's going to be one of the top dogs. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be in the semifinal round versus Antron Brown. I don't All know. Right, well, and, l l lay down a bet. Who would you bet on? Who would you bet on? If you were sitting in the seat, would you bet on David Grubnick or would you bet on Alan Johnson? <sighs> right now? Or are you talking history? <laughs> I mean, what are you talking? Are we saying history or are we saying right now? That's, that's the right part. Right now, what happened last race? I know. I'm, that's okay. what I'm saying. That, why do you think I'm saying those two, those three are going to be in the final? That, that's all I'm saying. All right, let's jump down to Funny Car. Funny Car, we got the big buff, Hagen. He's, he's taking charge right there. We got Ron Caps. We got John Forrest Cruz, which honestly has to, that, that, him sitting in the number four spot surprises me uh, a little bit. We have J.R. Todd sitting in five, and we have Tasca, the Ford guy, sitting in number six. And the one that really, really surprised me right now is your eight and nine spots, Robert Height and Alexis. Those ones surprised me a little bit. Um, if you would have asked me earlier in the year for my top predictions, um, and, like, again, no shot to anybody, number four spot would be different, and eight and nine would be different also. I would, I would have those two a little bit higher, and I, I'm sorry, Cruz, uh, this is, you know, my opinion. If you would have asked me at the beginning of the year, I don't think I would have had him at number four, but it just shows that any weekend is anyone's race. Who needs a countdown in Funny Car anyway? I mean, right now, Matt Hagen's running away with it with a two-round lead. I mean, who needs a countdown now? And, and furthermore, we, we're doing points and a half for Pomona, right? Isn't it yep. points and a half? That's stupid. That's just absolutely <laughs> stupid. I mean, why? I mean, you can actually, I mean, that's like putting two layers of icing on a cake, right? <laughs> Got it chocolate. Happens. Well, let me go put some vanilla on there, whatever. I mean, it just, <laughs> It, you don't need it. I mean, you've already manufactured uh, a, a a countdown drama. You don't need to manufacture any more. You're just kind of like, I don't know. It's it, it's overkill. <laughs> overkill. I mean, let them let at some point just let them race. At some point, let them race. 
kill the points and a half. Indy, if you're really going to do something with Indy, make it double points. You drop a drop a race, make Indy double points. All right, and we can argue about this. We still got two more classes. We're going to talk a little pro stock and pro mod a little bit later. Right now, it looks like we have our first guest ready to go. We're going to try this again. So we will always like to thank our sponsors. Anyone that likes to help us, you can reach out to Bobby Bennett, myself. But don't forget, you guys, you need your Competition Plus apparel. Get your CompetitionPlus.com apparel today. Whether it's our nitro-burning funny car design or the vibrant door slammer design, we have the swag to show you are always in the know. Get yourself a hat, too. And we know not everyone enjoys wearing a mask, but if you must wear one, at least wear a good-looking one. Check out the new CompetitionPlusApparel.com for the latest from the place where you have trusted for your news on the Internet for over two decades. That's right, everybody. Competition plus apparel. You need to get your swag today. Get your mask because we still have to wear them if you're traveling. I always travel with my Competition Plus, and you can see one of them hanging right there, my mask and my shirt. But without further ado, Bobby, we're bringing on our first guest. How would you intro this bad man? This is the guy that took drag racing to a new level who brought showmanship into drag racing uh, from a, a youthful, youthful exuberance. He's the guy who has always had grand thoughts, thought bigger and better, and loved drag racing to the point. Uh, presentation had to be big because drag racing is such a big sport. Present to you, Waco Willie. <laughs> Hello, How's gentlemen. it going tonight? Never better. Billy Meyer, as oh. far as I know, is the only funny car driver to ever get tackled buck naked by the Secret Service. <laughs> you were supposed, I, I told you that story, but that's, that is a correct statement. <laughs> but also, Billy Meyer is also, I believe, one of the, the first guy to bring a, a funny car or a, a nitro car in and, an and build an all-concrete drag strip that was so far ahead of its time. Well, I will say this. We're the first to do a lot of things. Some were good and some were really bad. <laughs> you know, but, but obviously you, got, you, you have to experiment whether you're tuning a car or, or, or running a racetrack or you know and so it, it obviously we, we're continuing to try things this week is is uh, an experiment uh, that seems to be going phenomenal uh, it, it uh, you know we started saturday and and, and uh, had just under thirty thousand people sunday here with the for the concert and a bull ride and the car show and and, and uh, uh, a lantern fest thing and, and then we had the Scotty Palmer thing last night uh, with thousands of people here and had a grudge race for $140,000 last night. Uh, tonight, Today we're running the Houston points race, uh, the national event that the sportsmen can get to run. And in the background you can hear, obviously we're running, you know, the, the top sportsman uh, event tonight. And, and then tomorrow is is going to be a, a all test and tuned for the top fuel and funny cars. Uh, and tomorrow night in downtown Walks Hatchy is is going to be crazy. And we're having a movie downtown at the amphitheater uh, with Don Perdome and myself there. Uh, and it's going to be the Don Perdome uh, Tom McEwen movie. I mean, it's it's I, I just keep talking. Thursday night is the fan fest in, in downtown. Uh, you know, and we had that bull ride thing downtown or the bull walking thing. And I mean, I'm, luckily I have a daughter and a son and a, and a son-in-law and people younger than me that, uh, that have more energy than I do, you know, to do this for 12 days, but uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Billy, I, I think that instead of doing the snake and mongoose movie, we should go back and bring up wheels of fire so we can see your famous uh trip to the uh to the hospital with your burned hands and everything <laughs> it, it, 
I, that actually, that scene, we filmed that scene in English Town, New Jersey, because that was where I was that week. And, and so we, the hospital let us do it. <laughs> and it was, it was pretty stupid, actually. But that's why the movie didn't go over very well. I was so, better. I, I was. I seemed to be a better driver, a better tuner, and a better track operator than I was an actor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, let me ask you something about the Texas Motorplex. I mean, uh, obviously throughout your career, you've done things really on a big scale. So, is this the Texas Motorplex? Is that something you just like? If I could think out as far and as wild as I could be. Is this how I would design a drag strip? Is that how the Texas Motorplex came about? Well, the Texas Motorplex actually happened, believe it or not, based off of one thing uh, in, in, in reality. Uh, Lou Bantle and his wife, who were chairman, he was chairman of the board of, of U.S. Tobacco uh, in, in 1981 when, the, when I was the first school bandit race car. That, they came i went i went to because i was partners of burn rose hell need them on that project and, and we go to daytona for their first race and, you know and they're having caviar and champagne and and and, and so the first drag strip they go to is english town new jersey at the summer nationals july 1st 104 degrees uh flying in, in a gulf stream land in morristown drive over there and, and they're 65 years old on a cane and, and there's not a, a real bathroom on the property uh luckily i kind of had this partnership thing with gary beck and larry minor where we were kind of one of the original teammate kind of partnership things and we parked next to each other and they had a bathroom in their in their in their trailer uh, for her to go to the bathroom uh and, and i realized you know we're I think we have a big league sport and we're, play, and we're playing in minor league ballparks. And that's where the whole concept came from. It basically was July of 1981. Bill, Billy, did you have a hard time getting the local government to give you approval to build this? Or is it just that Texas is so wide open they welcomed your idea with open arms? No, actually, believe it or not, uh, what I did is, is this, this property where we are, we were not in a city limits at the time. And I went to, I don't know, probably nine or 10 city council meetings to get them to annex us into the city. So it would be under city law and order. So so somebody couldn't sue us for no noise ordinances or curfews. So so we, we preset all of that stuff. You know, we, we preset out like the size of a beer you can sell. Uh, we preset, you know, the hours you can be open how many times we open after midnight and, and what the DBA levels can be 1500 feet from the finish line. So, you know, so that, that was a, that was a pre plan as George Bush would say, that was strategy we used. <laughs> so, so uh, go ahead, Sam. I'm sorry. So I, I've got a question for you, you know, being a Houston, Texas, I've got family in Houston and Dallas and, you know, understanding the Texas community and Texas culture. For you, you are now setting a stage for any other track that says, hey, we want to put on an event that's a week long. We want to extend what drag racing in heaven looks like. How, when you, when you guys have made this plan, you guys have executed this plan now, now watching it happen day in and day out, how do you feel each day knowing we've accomplished something else? Well, it's a two point part. The fact that I have a daughter and a, and a son-in-law and a general manager and Elon and, and everybody uh, here uh, that does the work, you know, compared to myself is phenomenal. You know, but but I, I would say that that what it, it's what's really cool about it is the fact that it shows that, that you know the with the state you know we have to give a lot of kudos to the state you know because the, the state of Texas has is a growth state you know it, it's not like California New York or Michigan or a lot of those states that 
that are, are kind of not big growth states, but it, they, they really are, are growth states. And so they have now understood the size of what we have been able to accomplish. And they put us in the same program, uh, you know, and with, let the noise go by, uh, you know, and so we're now considered in this new program with the state, uh, same size as, as the Super Bowl or the Final Four, or, or the Formula One race, and, and so it gives us some resources that we didn't have before to be able to improve the facilities for the spectators and for the and, and pay the racers more and pay NHRA more and actually accomplish something. So it really the state should probably be applauded, uh, Governor Abbott and and, and and all of the congressmen, Jake Elsey, who is now a U.S. Senate, U.S. congressman. I mean, those people saw. And City Walks at uh, saw what what you know the, the the capabilities were to do with this event, <clears throat> and and by doing what some of the other you know the the, the Super Bowl is not a one day event it's a ten day event. <coughs> that damn COVID it's hard to get rid of. Uh, just a joke. Uh, and so uh, you know it, it, when you have ten days you know to to do stuff like that it it really you can have every form of racing there is and, 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 and in drag racing and, and and actually meet the needs of every spectator and every racer and so it's it's just been a blessing billy i wore my uh texas motorplex guard wall shirt you know, <laughs> it, it uh and yes you're right about that COVID stuff 18 months later i'm still fighting it but that's okay that's another story uh did you ever think in your wildest imagination, you'd ever hear anybody describe Ennis, Texas as drag racing heaven as my co-host Sam did. Well, I would prefer them. I would prefer them saying Ellis County is drag racing heaven because it, it, it is it is multiple cities uh in the county that have that made this thing possible and walks the hatches has been leading the way uh in the last couple of years you know and, and so it kind of goes back and forth but but ellis county is the benefactor and and and, and the cities in ellis county have actually done it billy our friends over at american hot rod entertainment was, was asking about your your uh famous uh, explosion at indy the one where you had to end up borrowing uh pulling the rain you had to end up pulling a raymond beetle and borrowing a body from kenny bernstein well beetle only borrowed a roof <laughs> And it didn't pay off for him either. Uh, <laughs> I, I beat him in the final round of the 81 Winter Nationals when he borrowed a roof from Bernstein. But, yeah, I mean, when it happened, we didn't have time to get our spare car there uh, because it was, you know, late on, on the last day of qualifying. And, and so it, was, it ended up being just a – and was phenomenal was we did not have the same uh, chassis manufacturers. Uh, and, and so it was an all-night – deal to switch the body over but but yeah that was uh uh kenny kenny did raymond a huge favor uh i didn't appreciate it when he did it in 81 because i could have singled for the final uh but but he obviously repaid the favor uh, in 86 uh, and let me have the body for, for for the race day is that is that where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was created? That cutting the roof off. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually could. We were so busy fixing all of our stuff because we blew up so much crap that weekend that we didn't have time to even look up what they were doing. And I was, I was pr pretty shocked they actually showed up at the start line. I couldn't believe you could actually do that in an hour and a half, but they did. Yeah, when when I was pulling up the footage for our uh, storytellers episode with Bernstein and, and yourself, your car had more flames coming out of the headers after it stopped than it did going down the track. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Billy, if if you had to write your your life story all over again, if you well, not all over again, but before you began. 
could you ever have written a success story in this sport and in life as one you've experienced? No, I mean, you know, I, I obviously I would prefer to write the story without some of the accidents. You know, I'd prefer not having the drowning in there and, and the coma for three days in there and, and, and those things. But, but, but considering I, I actually, you know, I got out of high school with a 1.41 grade point average. And so, you know, and I left home six weeks after high school uh, driving a funny car. You know, so, I mean, from what's been accomplished in my family and with my kids and our faith that we have, I mean, you couldn't ask for more. So, I, so another question about speaking of this event, it's a two-part question. One, um, hopefully you were there to witness the $140,000 race. Um, so describe what one, you know, being at, at your facility, what that means to have a race of that much, you know, cash being handed over. And then two, from the concert, I watched the lighting of the lanterns and just the pictures that I saw from that. Can you describe those two? I know, I know they're two very different um, situations, but can you describe those for us? Uh, yeah, it, it was it was the the, the 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 weekend thing with the line under the lanterns and, and Dustin Lynch and, and Flatland and Wade Bowen uh, and Kyle uh, singing uh, and 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 the rodeo that we did uh, because you know our general manager Andy is a big rodeo guy and he came from the bull riding association so we had a bull riding uh, contest. And, and I've never seen that many bulls that pissed off in my life. Uh, I mean, it, it, the, the, I, I, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Because maybe it's because it was a little smaller than they used to be in, but it was taking them ten minutes to get the bulls out of the arena. They were so mad. I mean, they almost tore down the walls. But it was it, 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 it obviously. Uh, Interside, it's proud for seeing what my daughter and son-in-law and Andy and Elon and everybody's done uh, to 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 pull this off. Uh, because I have the concept and the idea, and, and they they do all the work, and, and they are the ones that come up with the, these ideas. So I mean, it, it was it was uh, that was that was you know uh, to see just under thirty thousand people here on a Sunday night, not a Saturday night. Sunday, I mean, Sunday night's not Sunday. Of, in, in the entertainment business, you know, Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night are the, your three bad nights, so to speak. But to be able to pull that off and, and do what they did was pretty incredible. And, and then, obviously, what we got going on for this whole week is, is, is you know, yeah, you can just look on social media and see how crazy every, what everybody thinks. I mean, it's finally we're showcasing every division of every, of the sport, whether it's top sportsman or whether it's pro mod or whether it's a hundred forty thousand dollar dirt race. I mean, you know, I was sitting next to a friend of mine last night watching it that was here, and he'd come up to watch it, and and he's not a big drag race fan, but he's one of my close friends, and I said, and, and we get worried about paying for twenty bucks on the golf course. You know, and, and, they're, and they're running for 140 grand. You know, I mean, you know, ob obviously it's uh, there were runs for 20 grand or runs for 10 grand or I mean, I mean it's it's kind of makes the, the the pinks all out concept look pretty stupid when somebody's willing to do that. Well, the thing is, Billy, I I watched you pit pick Larry Carrier's pocket at least twice, maybe three times for 25000 back in 79, 80, and I think 84, uh, twenty five to 35000 Now, you figure in inflation. Now, I flunked math. I was probably terrible at math, but I paid attention in journalism school. That's about even. You ran for 140000 right? Yeah. Actually, I won four times, but the, uh, the first time was in 74. So it wasn't the dash for the cash, as he called it back then. But 
yeah, I got so used to that. I started putting it down in my, in, 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 in my budget that that was going to be money in June that I had, you know, but, but it, it was, uh, uh, that, that was really damn good money back then, 20 grand. I mean, we got paid in, in 1980, I think we got paid $80,000 from wine traffic for the sponsorship and we got 30,000 from him. So, so, I mean, you get a, you, I, I felt like I should put their name on the side of the car. <laughs> well, <laughs> the sponsor. there, there were three, uh, certains at Bristol in the seventies and eighties. Number one, it was going to rain. Number two, Richard Tharp was going to lose in the top fuel final. And then Billy Meyer was going to run, win funny car. Those were the certains at Bristol. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like Tiger Woods always wanted to play at Bay Bay Hill or somewhere, you know, where he won nine times. I mean, I mean, it, it's uh, it, that ended up being one of those places we just did good at all the time. Do you kind of ever regret that you never got a chance to drive one of those pro mod cars? No. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the scarier or would have been the scarier experience, driving a pro mod car or having to fly in that airplane with Connie Kalita again? Well, obviously, the Connie Kalita story is a historical story, you know, because obviously I almost had some pretty bad things happen that day on the track when I got burned so bad. And, and uh, I've never thought I was going to die twice in a day. I, I have thought I was going to die once in a day, but that, that, the Connie Coletta story is infamous in our sport. Uh, and actually, Chad Head called me this week and said he just had dinner with, with Connie, and Connie told him that story, and, and he had to call me to repeat it. And that was what, three days ago. I mean, so, I mean, this is 40 years later, and, and it's, it's, the story still keeps getting told, but. Connie is infamous in some of his flights, but to land on the racetrack in Montreal, Canada, pick me up to fly me to a burn center was pretty cool. Yeah, I'll be bringing my Thank camera. You. Hold on. That was loud in the background. I, I'll be bringing my cameras back to the motorplex tomorrow when I land. So uh, we'll probably get the Connie Kalita airplane story in there for storytellers. Well, I, I can't wait for you all to get here. And if you notice, the timing system works great here. That's right. That's fine. Hey, and, and to wrap this all in with, you know, NHRA wrapping up the, the whole stampede, uh, there's two things. Um, it just proves that Camping World does fit into drag. Lost you for the noise. Fits into No, it just proves another reason why Camping World is another great premier sponsor of nhra with all these people out there i know there's probably campers that are lining people staying there and enjoying the the whole excitement of what's going on well, and I, then I secondly you, the, the, real quick the cool thing is hey i bought a I, I bought a fifth wheel uh instead of staying in a hotel just to support camping world uh and, and, and number two i, I don't know if y'all know or see aerials our drone pictures we by far have more we probably have 2300 uh campers here uh, motorhomes and, and rvs and fifth wheels and and full trailers here i mean it it is it the, the guy that cleans the the, the bathroom things at the for the motorhomes makes a fortune here i mean when you have 2300 motorhomes i mean it, there's so many motorhomes here it, it's crazy and, and then our special sections, you know, that have all of the hookups and the electricity and everything. And we, we have about 140 of those. I mean, and with 2,300 of the other ones. And then God knows how many racers now stay on one property. You know, we probably got 40 of the main pro teams stay on property in, in big, you know, Class A motorhomes. So, I mean, you couldn't find a better sport for, a, for somebody like Cammy World to be involved in. I promise you that. So right now you're telling me that you guys are giving the zoo uh, a run for their money. Say that again. You're giving uh, Brainerd the zoo a little run for their money this weekend. 
No, we 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 passed him a long time ago. <laughs> like I like it. I like it. <laughs> this but is I, Texas. <laughs> this is Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. They're in Minnesota. There you go. <laughs> hey. They're they're in Minnesota. Oh, now that. Hey, that's only, I live in North Dakota, so that's only six hours away from me. So, but like I said, I have home roots there down in Texas. So, I mean, my heart goes there first, but another thank you that I do want to tell you, and it kind of chokes me up, but you guys have Coffee Anderson uh, singing the national anthem. As a vet, what he's done with going to each one of the 13 service members that we lost and singing his song, Mr. Red, White, and Blue. I saw that, <clears throat> it brings me to tears and chokes me up now because I want to personally say thank you for bringing a phenomenal guy like him to sing one of the best songs that I've ever heard in my life is the national anthem. So from me to vets that didn't make it home to people that are currently serving my battle buddies, a sincere thank you to me, from me and all of us, for bringing a phenomenal guy like him to sing the national anthem there on Sunday. Well, I, I, I'll tell you what, the national anthem is, I mean, he does a good job with that, but, but obviously, you know, and you're gonna make me cry. You know, when, when you listen to his Mr. Red, white, blue song, I mean, it, 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 uh, it, it'll, it, if it doesn't bring you to tears, you might as well go to Afghanistan and live there. I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, I think what he's going to be able to do here Sunday is is going to be awesome. Uh, I think it's going to be as cool as, as the concerts that we had this week. And, and uh, I think I think if we have him sing it a couple different times during the day, you know, dur during the downtimes. But but it's uh, you are right. It's a tearjerker. Yes, it definitely is. But you know, I like I said when I saw that I, yeah. It, it, it brought it brought back memories and like I said I just wanted to definitely thank you guys for what you guys are doing for the drag racing community what you guys are doing especially just showing everybody that you know no matter what what you are who you are where you're from we can all come together and it just proves why drag racing is America's sport well and, and I'll tell you what I mean obviously what has been accomplished so far you know it, 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 Hey, it's by the grace of God, and and, and, and and it happens to be, you know, it's so a lot easier, I will tell you that, when you have a forecast like we have had and we are having, you know, and, and that's not going to happen every year, that you get two weeks, ten days of perfect weather. Uh, but but this year it, it looks phenomenal, and, and the, the Friday night program is going to be crazy, and, and with the extra purse paid on Friday night, for, for the qualifying guys, to, it's it's the largest purse in history in our sport for a single event, uh, and, and that couldn't have happened without the help of the state. Uh, you know, with, with them putting us into that new program, and uh, it's going to be the most money NHRA's made here in years, and and, and 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 we hope it's the most fun anybody's ever had here, because there's nothing that you can't. I mean, over this nine day period there's pretty much if, if there's anything in drag racing there's nothing that you're not gonna be able to see so you know we're about a third of the way through and and, and got a lot more sleepless nights to go uh, but uh, and you saw the fireworks in the background just then i mean and, and this is what tuesday night and, and we're running a, a special show tonight with twenty five thousand dollar purse for, for for the top sportsman and so it, it's it's a uh, we're pretty excited to try to bring this to the sport and try to elevate the sport to the next level. Well, as they continue to crank the music and you got the fire, the pyro show going behind you, we from the Competition Plus Power Hour want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to what you're doing. is It's phenomenal. Like I call it, this is proving why Texas right now is the drag racing heaven of them all. So, Thank you for this event that you're putting on and your time with us here at the Competition Plus Power Hour. Appreciate it. And by the way, you won't see me singing. I can't even play an air guitar. So it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're expecting this to be a really good weekend and we're looking forward to all the fans and the racers and everybody having a great time. It's, I mean, I think it's going to be our, our greatest uh, uh, thing that's happened since I built the place. Billy, yes. and if you, 
one parting shot with you here. I think your forecast here is God's way of paying you back for 1988. Our 94 or 2000. <laughs> 2000 would be the 2000. Obviously, he's talking about I trade when we rained out eight times, but but 2000, if you remember, it rained out three weeks in a row. So so we we are, we do have one other thing we have. Do we have a lot of records here? This is not a record of, of, that makes you proud, but we have the record of the only national event in history to never have any qualifying for Top Fuel or Funny Car Pro Stock. They actually went off the points on the third weekend when it finally cleared up. They decided to take the top 16 points leaders, and they were the qualified people. And so uh, that's a record you really don't want, by the way. Uh, good. So let's change the subject to something more positive. <laughs> We're very proud of you, well, Billy. How's that? We're very proud of you. We're thank proud you. of what you've accomplished. All right. Appreciate yes. it. And again, and, and, we don't want to. Oh. And in closing, this, this strand wiring works really well. You don't have to have solid wire. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you again. Enjoy the fest, uh, festival. Enjoy the stampede, the week. What you guys are doing down there in Texas, we all appreciate you. Uh, all the media people that are there, if they haven't told you already, thank you for giving us a week long of content. We appreciate it. And well, again, God bless you. And y'all will love the new media center. It is impressive. And you'll have a great time there. All right. Thank you, sir. You enjoy the rest of your time there tonight. See you guys later. See you. In a See ya. Man. Wow. And, and I look, Bobby, I don't mean to get choked up like that, but anybody that, you know, that knows me understands my situation and what I've experienced in my life. But having a guy like that, that's a stand up guy that's willing to do that, like, oh, like it, it kind of made me a little sad that I wasn't able to go and be able to see him and meet the guy uh, and personally tell him thank you and what his song has meant to me. But I just think. It's, there's no better way to do it and wrap up a weekend like that with such a, an honorable song for everybody. But guys and girls out there, even you, Bobby, we got a surprise guest that's uh, stopping in. Uh, he's down in the waiting room. He's moving the camera. So I'm going to bring uh, Mr. Traveling MMR from the Texas Motorplex himself. Yo, 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 guys, how's it going? Man, it's been it's been a tearjerker show so good. far. I mean, I've had a had a couple of tears. Uh, good, I need good. you to do me a favor and get an interview with Coffee Anderson, who's going to be singing the national anthem. Uh, Bobby's been holding it down for you. But Lee, man, how is it? Tell us, give us the four one one of what it's like down there right now. Show us some live feed, everything. Let let us see. Well, man, first of all, saw some behind the scenes of the Billy Meyer interview. I was in the conference room as he was on the horn, and later on tonight, you know, he mentioned right there at the end the media center. They have done a jam up job. I'm gonna go live. I'm gonna show off the media center. I'm the first media personality in that brand new media center it's mine i'm taking my spot and no one else is going to have it it's mine i'm claiming a spot at the motorplex look guys they are doing it right they are doing it right the motorplex looks better than it ever has a big huge texas flag on the tower painted on it there's new asphalt there's new suites there's a new media center in fact i'm in thorpe transportation suite right now broadcasting this show with some Two beautiful ladies watching drag racing. That's always a good thing. But, you know, right now, Pro Mod shootout, Top Sportsman shootout, uh, Top Dragster shootout. Looks like we got some classic back half also in action tonight. Al Tucci and Wes Buck on the mic calling the hey, shots. Lee, Lee, go into the announcer's booth while you're on the show. I need you to do that. I, I can't. I, I'm not that mobile, man. You know that. We had issues no. at the World Door Slammer Nationals. No, 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 no. Lee, get up there. But hey, I know you did this because everyone wants to know because we talked about it. Lee, where have you eaten yet? Like, tell me what does the food taste like? Because I know it's just so good. 
Well, I did have Whataburger last night, late. They're open 24 hours, most of them, so I had, I had me uh, some Whataburger. And there is uh, Lone Star Cafe in Hillsboro, Texas. I uh, stopped in there today, had a uh, chicken fried steak. That was good with pinto beans and coleslaw. It's always a good option to go with. Uh, and I got to give a shout out to Overflow Coffee, downtown Hillsboro. Great vanilla latte and awesome atmosphere in that particular coffee shop. Hey, Bobby, Jay, did you hear that? Question. Let me answer a question real quick. Randall James, who asked, how do we get these kind of guests and only have 40,000 subscribers? We know people. 22 years of presenting drag racing. That's how we get the guests. There's a lot of people that uh, haven't heard of us. Well, here, but it's all about who you know, and we know a lot of people. There you go. Lee, I said I hear those voices. You're still in the same spot. Uh, get up I don't there. Know. Get up Get up there and well, it's dark. It's dark in there. Like I'm I'm no joke. It is dark. You wouldn't see anything anyway. It's okay. We want to show the people what it is like. Come on, Lee. Do it for the people that are watching. It's going to get us over 40K. Your show, Monday Morning Racer. My show, Outlaw Performance ENT. Okay. Dude, he just figured out how to walk in the room at the same time. Don't make him I mean, honestly. Honestly. I mean, yeah, hey, I mean, Lee. He's just, hey, let me give a shout out to my girl, Jules, down in Australia. I hear you, baby. I see you, baby. I don't know what's going on there, Lee. Save me. Help me, Lee. I hear Promod to the lanes. We need you now. Yep. Promod Pro to, to the, the lanes. lanes. Round one was was interesting. Obviously, uh, I, it's going to be hard to beat Stevie Fast. I, I'm expecting, depending on how the ladder works out, that it might very well be a Stevie Fast, Frankie, the Madman Taylor final, which would be epic in Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Frankie the Madman Taylor, man, it, it's, he's just he's just as entertaining to listen to. Yes, yeah, and quality guy. He is a genuine quality guy too. Uh, he's very approachable, but and, and a drag racer that gets more done on less than I think just about anybody else out there. You know, the thing is, what was so interesting is that we were on the same trip. Myself and Madman were down in Australia, and they had a hard enough time understanding me. And then him, they just said, <laughs> F that, mate. I, just just give me sign language or something. Give me sign yeah, we, we got it. We need an interpreter. <laughs> hey, so – so, Lee, I, I got to ask, you know, like you said, you're down there, you're experiencing it. And, and every week in the comments, we talk about it. We talk about everyone saying, well, the, the, the fan, there wasn't that many people there. The stands weren't packed. You know, are we going to yep. have to worry about hearing people complain about that this week? Well, sadly, you already do have people complaining about it concerning last night. They've seen footage from Drag Illustrated of the Grudge Race, and they've seen my video of the Grudge Race between C.V. Fast Jackson and Bubba Stanton, and they're like, where's all the people in the stands? Look, folks, this is a brand new program. This is a brand new program. It's on a Monday, and why don't you go look at footage of the concert they had here of like 20,000-plus people does anybody that, even well, sit in the stands during a Grudge Race? I mean, no, no. there were plenty of people on the line. And watching right there uh, as Stevie Fast Jackson and Bubba Stanton were doing their thing. And beyond that, because there were two top fuel cars. There were nostalgia funny cars. There, It was a good show. And look, you've got to give the Motorplex credit that they're starting something. And it's only going to build momentum and become something that I think is a classic week for all of drag racing for people to attend. You're going to see the Monday and Tuesday crowds grow. But it's a start. So just shut okay. up. It, eat, you know, you can't tell them to shut up. we got to be politically correct shut up. and tell them to eat broccoli. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. No, eat, bro eat broccoli. Hush up. 
Hey, Lee, That's a Lee I, I got to ask. Lee from Brockery. I, <laughs> I got to ask, Lee, right there behind you, those are obviously cabinets, but they look like they're in the inside of a trailer. Yes. Uh, it fails me right now the name of the company. I think it's uh, Moduline. I think I have to find later on my live feed in the media center. I'll have the name right because that's like the name of the media center. The suites are all lined with these beautiful aluminum cabinets. Maybe here I'll, I'll, I'll try to pan everything. I can't tell what I'm looking at, but I'll go back. They had to remodel all the suites due to the water damage here. Again, Thorpe transportation. You just had to screw it up, Sam, didn't you? Well, I, like I said, it, it looks like it's in the it looks like the inside of a trailer in there. So it's it's pretty cool yeah. how they did all that and and whatnot. And I mean, what what is jamming in the background right now, Lee? Like, oh, there's DJ. On? There's a light show. There's the 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 cars are rolling through a uh, fog of a smoke machine. They're doing it right here in the Texas Motorplex. Drag racers as they are, rock stars, and they're making it making it look like it. It's pretty cool. They're like us, Sam. They're rock stars. Right. That's what I was doing before the show. I tagged you in the video, Lee. I mean, I, I saw rock that. out before. I rock saw out. that. Yeah, you were rocking out. He was listening to Guns and Roses, and I was listening to the Isley Brothers. So what's messed up for this picture? Generational gap. Generational gap. For sure, for sure. There's pyro every night. There's a huge fireworks show. Look, at, they're doing it right, guys. They are doing it right. Well, Lee, before you leave, I got to put in my request now. I need some brisket. I need you to send me okay. some ribs, beef, okay. beef and pork ribs. Uh, okay. Just freeze it and send it to me. I'll I'll PayPal you. It's a lot easier for me to eat it for you and enjoy it for you. That's not right, brother. That's not right. <laughs> well, I'll, eat, I'll eat some for you too. Right, 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 right. If you, if, I'm telling you. Next morning, but. I'm I'm telling you right now. If either one of you guys send me pictures of you eating that, we're not we're not friends anymore. We're gonna we're not gonna be Facebook friends. Well, I can say I'll just put my whole face down in it. Blah, 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 blah. I'll motorboat the brisket. <laughs> Oh Just God, we're getting favorite. demonetized. We're getting demonetized for that, Lee. Probably, but, Lee, probably. <laughs> Lee, before you go, I know it's loud there. You're moving around. You're enjoying yes. yourself. Yes. You're outside now. See, oh, look, and, see. Promot is in the lane, so I do got to get to work here pretty soon. But I'm gonna try to go into the conference room. Translate what he just said. La, 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 la. Right, he right, right. So like, here's, uh, here's the conference room. Okay, here I'll show. Wave, everybody. Wave. That, that guy was just on the show. So hey, everybody you got to put the phone down, Lee. Lee, you got to put the phone down a little bit. Down. Now turn down. it around. Yeah. Okay, I'll turn around now. now we can see everybody. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So that's inside the conference room, and everything looks great. All Texas right. Motorplex has never looked better. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Now, now go and give Al Tucci, go give right. Al Tucci a kiss for me right now. Okay. Okay. I need you to okay. do that. Okay. Hang on. From Let me Bobby see if I can. I, he needs a kiss. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. I don't. I, I'm in. I'm in the danger zone. Right there, Mike Carpenter. West Buck, Al Tushi hey, over there. West Buck. Hey, put the phone hey, down. What's going on, man? Lee, Monday, there you Tuesday. go. West Buck. Yesterday was all about you. Hey, Al. Al give players. everybody. Round number two is getting ready to come out. Love you, Sam. I don't know where you're at. Yeah. We love you, Sam. Hey, the guy's here. Yeah, he just showed up. He was, he was there to sit right in front of us. We said, no, he went. Oh, okay. Can, Dude, thank, you don't love can me. You, thank you. You don't love Lee, me. Can you too? ask? <laughs> All right, Lee. Well, we'll yeah, they're about to get racing. All right, well, we'll let you go, Lee. Thanks for coming on, popping on, saying hi to everybody. Yes, yes, I, I definitely wanted to bring some sanity to the show and 
make sure that uh, the white balance was tilted in our favor. Wait a minute. Take me down to Tucci for a moment here. I, oh, to oh my. They, everybody he, wants Tucci on the show. Take me down they want, to Tucci right they, now. They want Tucci on the show. He can't they hear you. For one, he can't hear you. Well, take. I don't give a bleep. What, what do y'all want? What do y'all want? They, I want Tucci. You unplug your unplug your uh, phone. Bobby and Bennett here. Wants you, so what's all right, what is wrong with that? Bobby right. Bennett, what's up, man? Hey, man. How you doing? I heard you tell them. I can't hear you, Sam. Damn, I am. Green eggs and ham and a taco right. joint down the street. What's happening, guys? You, man. It's Bobby. I wish I had the volume. Right? He's got the earplugs on. I can't hear anything. Tell him to take them off. Unplug. Tell him to unplug it. Unplug Monday morning race. Yeah. Hey, talk, guys. Tucci, I thought I was hey. going to have to invite you down to the bike rack to meet me after school. I said that last night when they opened up all the cattle trail down here at the bike racks. I said, if you ain't got a black guy at that bike rack, it's not an official bike rack. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great, man. It's the Stampede of Speed, the first ever Stampede of Speed. I'm telling you what, hey. Monday Night Nitro was awesome. What was about Tuesday night? Thing? You know what we need to do is when they do the track walk, we need to get a couple of those bulls and let them get about halfway down the track and turn the bulls loose. Hey, there's something new. You know, that's better than they asked me if I wanted to ride that big horn thing. I said, no, I ain't getting on that thing. Please, no. Hey, Tooch. Not even a pretty Tooch. please. Yes, sir. Before you go, Tooch, we need a beautiful smoky burnout from you. Oh, look at Bobby. Bobby's going, come on, man. Yeah! Come on. A smoky burn out there for Bobby Bennett and Sam the man. You should have talked. All right, now give. Where's Wes at? He's probably on the phone, huh? Get Wes yeah, off the phone. Wes, on, Buck. Man. What's going on, buddy? Hey. Hey, hey Lee. Hey, Jeff, hold the phone been? down, Lee. Back up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> leave me alone. Simple. Hey, hey can you got to show up for work, so I had to come into work. <laughs> What, how did you let this guy get out of hosting the show? It's unbelievable. It's, it's, he didn't even let me here. go. He didn't even let me come down to Texas. Yeah, what gives? What's going on, they Slim? Said I'd Slim? Eat, they said I'd <laughs> eat too much brisket. I suppose you're going somewhere like late model stock car racing. You know, that's how you get kicked out of this circle. Yeah. You keep yeah. driving no. in circles, we stop talking to you. <laughs> driving hey, in that's circles, how I only sorry. No, I've only lasted 13 laps before I crashed, so that career is done. Hey, Sammy, Sammy, don't do any of this. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh, God. This really has been spectacular. For anybody who's thinking about coming out here, Bobby, you'll appreciate this. Like, there's something special happening here. I mean, the effort, Billy Meyer, Christy Meyer, Andy Carter, Elon Warner, everybody – this is like a significant deal, man. I mean, this is like drag racing. Like, it's really, drag racing heaven. This is putting on a show. I think, I don't know if it was a no. story you wrote, Bobby, um, or if it was Susan Wade, a, a piece I read on competitionplus.com today. But it was just talking about understanding the entertainment portion of our sport. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously fierce competition. We all take it very seriously, but we do have a responsibility to put, put on a show, man. And I mean, Monday night, Sunday night, they had a freaking, they had like a rock and roll or a concert, some big time famous country music singer, Dustin Lynch, Al Tucci's here, unbelievable, right? I mean, it's really been pretty, I mean, way more than pretty impressive. The investment, they got a jumbotron. I mean, it's just very, very, very well done. I think Billy Meyer's putting on a bit of a monster truck this weekend. Monster trucks are coming out in a minute. Many, is that any monster? Many, many Is it many monster trucks? Really? You know what I like? The pace. I mean, we literally, it was 18 minutes after the last pair of pro mods ran, and they called them back up. And I thought, there's probably going to ruffle some feathers in the pits. But this is how it has to go. I mean, because they want to put on a three-hour show tonight. It's been 40 minutes since they ran pro mod, and they're underneath us right now. You know? I mean, that's how you got to do it. Hey. And the only thing that can make it better is to throw in a, a wrestling ring with midget wrestlers. And that would that be would it. Do it. 
That would do it. Or get Ricky, your buddy Ricky Smith to wrestle a bear. No, the monkey. <laughs> Let him wrestle that monkey again. It was earlier today. We need Ricky Smith uh, yeah. wrestling a bear down here. Something. Oh they can't whip, whip a monkey, so he yeah. better wrestle a bear. Have him put a long horn. Yeah. There go. Well, look, guys, they got to get back to work, so I'm getting out of here. See you, Mike. All right, Lee, we will cut you loose. We will let you go. Yes. All right, Lee, have a good one. But yes, that was kind of cool to have Lee on talk about that. Bobby, now we got to get back into the. We, we've had some fun. We've talked about drag racing heaven. We got to see what it looks like. You can see the lights, the pyro show, everything going down. Like I said, that's, that's drag race in heaven. It's what it's intended to be and what it's supposed to be. But we have to go right back into the nitty gritty. We're going to talk some more point standings really quick here. We're going to talk a little pro yeah, stock. Actually, dude. they were. Yeah, yeah, we do. We're going to talk pro mod since. Uh, or no, we're going to talk pro stock. We'll talk pro stock right here. Yeah. We've got Mr. Greg Anderson at number one, Eric Enders, Kyle Koretsky, Dallas Glenn, Aaron Stanfield, and Troy Coughlin Jr. That is a, a the top six right there. If you would have asked that Kyle Koretsky and Dallas Glenn would have been 3-4, I don't think anyone would have said that right away out of the gates. But, I mean, they're putting on a great show. They're fighting. I think your, your top two is obviously your battle. I'm surprised that Coughlin Jr. is at number six, but that's just my personal opinion. But I think your top two, your battle there, I, I predict a um, a strong jump by your number five and six spots uh, coming into the well, next couple of races. Well, remember, this silly points and a half really makes it hard to, to predict what's going to happen. I mean, points and a half, yeah, that that – kind of makes it hard to predict you know that that's a that's the wild card in there and again i don't i think you're you're overdoing it when you get points and a half at the last race I, points and a half or double points at indy yeah but not the last race let them fight it out and you know there's enough manufactured drama you don't need any more no and i, mean, I agree and what like our I, viewers think should it be points and a half for the last race or regular points? I know yeah, some of I mean, them that's a great question. shouldn't have a countdown, but it is what it is, you know? Yeah, I mean, to you guys out there that are still tuned in to us yakking, us getting a great interview with Mr. Al Mad Tucci. I mean, Al is just, he's just the man on the, on the microphone. There's no one like him that brings that different energy, that different style. Uh, Wes Buck, you know, obviously with Drag Illustrated, giving his his opinion, actually living in Texas now. So I think that's cool. Uh, but that double points, let us know what you guys think of that as we continue to wrap it up. And then we are going to talk a little pro stock motorcycle. I'm, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think, Bobby? What is your, you know, Steve Johnson being number one and Jail, Matt, Eddie, Scott, what do you think about that? I'm surprised by the number eight spot. I'm not, you know, I would expect that to be a number four or five spot. Uh, honestly, just because of what Matt's doing, um, you know, I would, I would like to see Angie up a little higher in this uh, list. But I mean, that's just my personal opinion. What are you, what are you thinking there, Bobby? I think Matt Smith. Don't, don't go to sleep on Matt Smith. Do not go to sleep on him. Uh, Steve Johnson, uh, Steve Johnson would be the feel good story of the year. Uh, but uh, oh. I gotta tell you, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be hard for him racing without job, you know, for yep. the, for those races. And you cannot, you cannot bobble the ball, not one time here for the rest of the season. I mean, you gotta, you gotta bring it every single time. All right, here we go about those points that you talked about. Top fuel 173 says. I say double points, making it interesting. Uh, and then right after that, no extra points. They suck. Regular points. Uh, no countdown or points and and a half. So, I mean, there's a mixed opinion. Double points. Well, let's let's go back to the good old days. The, the, the good old days. 
no, no, no. You can't do that, Bobby. I See, can here do we go. whatever I want to no. do. Yes, no, you can't do. because earlier you told me I, I have to make a decision on well, you now. Or God, the- you're, you're like my wife. <laughs> Hush for a moment. <laughs> my God. You All better right. glad. You better. I hope she's not in the same room or can hear you. She's gonna come back here and slap you on the show. Yeah, well, she knows that I'm the man of the house till she comes around. <laughs> so <laughs> here's the deal. All right. Back when we had all of those uh, championship races, like for instance, the the before most before you were born or a twist. Oh look, somebody's britches. Someone's agreeing with you. Listen, Go back to the good old days. The good old days. Okay, let's let's talk about the good old days. The good old days just skipped the regular season and went straight to the countdown because there was only six. There's only eight to ten races. So that was a countdown. You didn't need one back then. But when you get to 23, 24 races and you're clinching the championships with four races to go in the season, that sucks. All right. And there's a very good chance you're not going to get many media people that's going to write anything about a championship that's already been clinched. What are we going to write about? Oh, oh, there's a good battle going for fourth place. Give me a break. Okay. The year that we had the, the, four or five cars battling for the top fuel championship. There was only eight races, eight races. Okay. So there you go. That's why we got hey, to count now. But look, look, if you look at it, top fuel, he says it makes it interesting. Right. And then right here, top fuel says it's good for the points battle. That's all I'm saying. I, I get, you're talking about the good old days. It was just a good old, you know, but hey, it is what it is. It's it's what it's what gets the people going. It's like you know what the the countdown. Yeah, I'm gonna bring another movie uh, cool some reference in here. Good old, some people wouldn't know the good old days if it jumped up and bit them in the ass. That's the the good old days thing. is like like on Joe good Dirt having snakes. Now. It's now, what? right now. You're living the best era in drag racing right now. You, you drag racing is on demand anywhere you want to see it. You don't have to wait for a month later to watch the broadcast of the race. You can watch it the same day. And oh, heaven forbid if we have to watch it the next morning. Okay. But what you if, don't have what to if wait social media goes down? For a magazine to come in the mail. You're living in drag racing's golden era right now. Get over I it. I agree. That bull crap. Like, we also like had twenty five cents a gallon gas too. Then, you know, get off my track. That, get, don't even get me started on that crap. Hey, hey, look to lighten the mood, Bobby. Since you, since you're getting on your get off my track. Monday morning racer says we even have a rodeo clown, and it's not him. So, <laughs> he's trying to lighten your mood. He sees that you're upset a little bit. <laughs> no, it just it just <laughs> the- gets me irritated when. People just take for granted what they got, and they don't understand how far this sport has come to get to that point. I mean, for goodness sakes, we got we got drag cars running 330 miles an hour. 330. Remember, that's the only time we could get a car to run over 30, 300 miles an hour back in the day was to put hydrogen peroxide in a rocket and run it down the track. Good. Everybody's getting on you right now. The good old days. You got. I don't give a I, number of cars. Ask, ask me if I give a <laughs> Oh man. Oh, this is just funny. How do we get a lie wrong in the real time? Yeah, uh, yeah. Four four races in the world finals. There's your good old days. Oh, it's a one lane racetrack. I guess they never went to Columbus back in the day either, huh? <laughs> Yeah. I oh mean, man, you guys are rallying Bobby up tonight. He's not. He's he's gonna have to go for a brisk walk after he gets off the show. He's gonna be so riled up. <laughs> Tell him like it is, Bobby. Tell him like it is. Hey, but hey, I'm happy. I like like you said, Bobby. I don't think there's another time to be alive and to be a racing fan in general, just because of everything that's going on. Like you said, when have we had a show like this uh, to be able to speak? drag race and talk it throughout the week at night you know have a live feed where lee can run around and 
be interactive with us exactly from the track and do that. So, um, I mean, there, there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing else you can say. We're going to still have those people that are going to complain uh, about what's going on. Lee's still watching the action later on Monday morning. Racer, that's right, everybody. If you want to see some great racing, Lee, uh, his, his YouTube page and his Facebook page has all great content on there. You guys can go and check that out. Most of these people don't even remember the good old days. I would say that's the problem with our sports and our fan base. Top Fuel 173. And that's something that I'm trying to do on my page and I think Lee is trying to do too and we're trying to do here at Competition Plus is bring a different um, a vibe to what drag racing is. I mean, there's different types of drag racing. I know there's some that Bobby Bennett doesn't like that I like um, and that we could, you know, that we could all discuss. But, you know, even when asked, when people ask what I do, you know, yes, I have a full-time job, but I, I let people know I do social media for drag racing. And a lot of people say, well, and, you know, I asked him, I'm like, well, what do you think of drag racing? And a lot of people say, I, I think of a guy wearing khaki shorts, you know, some Sperry's and got on a, a linen white shirt driving his Corvette on the weekend, you know, and, and we need to change that dynamic of what drag racing was originally and NHRA was originally designed off of. We have to bring new people and new entertainment to the business. And lo and behold, Sam, look what's going on right now. Sam, when they ask well, what you I, do. I, Tell them you're a badass television show host. That's what you are. That's it. Man, you, you must have watched Cool Runnings a couple of days ago or something like that. You, you're, you're reciting stuff from there. Uh, here we go right here. Pro Stocks need new bodies. Well, if you believe that, you need to go out and sponsor a team. Give yes. a team a couple of grand. Give a team a couple of grand so they can do something. Guys, you we, can, know we can – we can complain till we turn blue in the face. Let's let's like, go back. Let's back up. All right. I've heard all of this about the body styles and everything. And I, I, I asked uh, Graham Light, who uh, who was a good friend of mine. Uh, we worked, you know, I thought he was a good guy. He had a job that nobody wanted to do that he had to do. But anyway, I asked him, I said, at what point did we stop requiring the pro stock cars to run a steel roof and quarters? And he says, I, I don't know. I said, well, when you figure that out, you'll figure out the point that we ruined pro stock. All right. See, the problem is now, and some will disagree with me, is that when you have these one piece bodies that they make basically into the pro stock cars, it's, to, to recreate that body, you have to have the permission of the manufacturer. So then the manufacturer controls what cars come out. If Chevrolet does not want uh, does not want something other than a Camaro, you're not going to do that, or you're going to get sued. Now, when you had a steel roof and quarters, you could build whatever you want to. You could even have a Cadillac, you know, back in those days. And that's why you saw so many different body styles is because they used the steel roof and quarters. E even on a uh, conversion car, we still had steel roof and quarters. So if you want to look where Pro Stock went wrong, it was that moment. And then someone brings up Pro Mod, and I'm just going to talk about this because Doug Winters actually posted a picture next to Stevie Fast Jackson car. His, you know, his Pro Mod, Doug Winters Pro Mod versus Stevie Fast Jackson's Pro Mod. I mean, all these cars look different. There's a lot of body style changes. And these cars are starting to get smaller, lighter, and sleeker. And, I mean, it, it's a dynamic of the sport. Uh, you know, we, we can argue, like I said, we can argue to, we turn blue in the face about this and that or whatever. But, I mean, it in all reality, and Top Fuel 173 says it, and it brings it straight to head, is that we have to do a better job at, one, promoting to younger generations, getting these people that like the sport, that are too scared to come out and step out into the sport, getting them involved. Also, too, we just like I don't I don't we need to mainstream what we're going to do. And and with pro stock, I think, you know, right now, that's kind of the most affordable class for someone to get into. Yes. Would I like the cars to really look like exactly what they are? Yes. But it there's a lot more that goes into it. You know, I mean, it's not just cut the chassis off and drop a chassis on. So um, we. I think we're trending in the right directions. Are we treading water? Are we doing whatever we need to do? I think there's conversations that are going around. 
Um, you know, especially with this one that says they need to market to new people. Uh, I have some insight uh, with conversations I've had to different events that I've been into. Um, and I think that NHRA, you're going to see a different change in the direction that NHRA is, is headed, their focus and what they're trying to do. I think that the trend in our industry is going in. Whoa, so you get too mad there. The trend is going in the right way. <laughs> well, see what, yeah, happens, yeah, see what yeah. happens when I get too energetic, Bobby. Yeah, it, the microphone goes limp. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, if you get there on Fridays at the NHRA national event, uh, I know I personally witnessed at, at ZMAX Dragway two busloads of students with the YES program going in to watch the drag races. And, and and that's that's pretty awesome because you can see the 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 youth uh, being exposed to drag racing. But then again, you know, our society has devalued so much of uh, of what used to be such a value with us. I mean, I grew up playing with Hot Wheels cars. There were so many toys that were related to automotive and stuff model cars have you ever tried to buy a buy, a buy a little have you ever tried to buy a model car at walmart doesn't exist they do on ebay but you know hot wheels cars everything it all used to be a culture you grew up you played with the toy cars then you got a bicycle and, and not every kid even r- rides a bicycle anymore I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you go out in the yard, you play all day long. Some kids never go outside in the yard. They're stuck to the phone, which today's phone is a, I hate to say it, and I, I, forgive me for the terminology, it's modern day crack pipe. Because these kids will stay stuck to that phone and won't go out and do the stuff and, and all that. So, you know, as a society... That's the reason why drag racing is fighting for a younger market. But there's another more important thing. And I want to see your reaction to this, Sam, when I tell you this. Drag racing once had a firm grip on that that demographic in the the early to mid-60s. And then we had uh, 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 an event come along that basically took wiped out our 18 to 24 year old demographic from all of the world, all of our, our country. And that was the Vietnam war. I mean, up until then you would see drag racing on stuff like the monsters. You'd see it on all these others. And and it tried a couple of times on like chips on the TV shows. And I mean, even Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner had front engine rails on it. But then as it went along, very true. It, it, just, it didn't do that because that demographic just wasn't there. And then, uh, you know, video games, uh, you know, He-Man, Skeletor, all of those ga- all of those action figures and everything, they took away the importance of the automobile with the with the youth. So, Bobby, are you ready for this? Because I think this is the best part of this show is we get to give our opinion and we're very interactive with the fans. So, boom. Right here, Top Fuel 173 says that he invited his whole class to a national event in Maple Grove. They didn't even know that drag racing like this existed. I think we have done a very, lately we've done a very better job at, very better sounds horrible, but we've done a great job at advertising. I think we need to go back to the way we used to, where there was posters everywhere and we gave out tickets on the radio stations and, you know, different things like that. I think that's some of the things we need to get back to, touch on that because there's a lot of comments. Uh, for me, even, boom. Does anybody even listen to the that? radio anymore? No, but we have XM radio. We have, you know, all that. So I think we need to get back to that. Uh, and I want, I want to get through a lot of these comments that are talking this, because this is a good thing about our show is that we are interactive with you, but we can continue to, you know, drive these conversations. Where did you start racing? I started racing actually uh, in Texas and Louisiana. My brother and my uncle at the time both had motorcycles, which I was very um, scared of at the time. They both had high boosters, um, and it was arm drop racing. From there, 
my uncle got into a couple of crashes on his motorcycle. My brother flipped one and they started um, racing Tahiti jet boats. Uh, so my uncle has a big block 454 Chevy in his jet boat and they started racing those. Um, that's where I got my love. And then obviously because of Fast and Furious and then they had race legal in California where I grew up and that's how I started racing. Now I own an 87 Fox body Mustang that's in pieces right now, but I'm currently working on it. Uh, true Ford guy. And yes, that's where, so it continues. I like arm drop grudge racing, run, run what you brung. So that's my little story about my background in racing. Um, Stan, Stan says he disagrees with me when it comes to, uh, and top fuel 173, when it comes to getting younger people in the stands, he said, I disagree. He needs to promote to people that are older, have jobs and money for a $70 ticket. Man, I can spend $70 in a bar at 21 years old. Just saying. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you like the sport, you like the sport. $70 at the grocery store or, you know, to get gas and to get a couple of Gatorades and everything, you're spending that nowadays. So I don't think saying to older people is the way to go. I think we need to continue to drive this needle forward and do events like what we're doing, get younger people in there. So, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Bobby, I don't know how you feel about that. Well, I, I, I think that we need to try to play to everybody. I mean, not just the not just the older crowd that can afford a ticket, but we also need to uh, impress upon the, the, the youth. I mean, because look at me. When I was 12 years old, I created my first magazine. Now look at me, you know. Yep. And uh, 22 years ago, we created – uh, one of the very first internet drag racing magazines and one that's still around. And, you know, you just never know that, you know, as I tell people, Jaws was once a baby fish. Oh God, here he goes back to that story. Uh, Mopar man says hot rod reunion, still $65 for a three day general mission. That's not bad at all. I mean, you guys, and then this is going to be my point that I'm going to bring up what someone else says. Guys, there's people spending 200 So I went to the Wisconsin Notre Dame game, right? My little brother plays for Wisconsin. I didn't pay for a ticket. I just paid to get down there. The tickets were $253 to get into Soldier Field, and people were buying them like they were freaking Gatorades or lemonades at 75 cents on the corner from somebody's stand. So we're complaining, I, and, and this is my frustration. Bobby, I'm, I'm going to put myself on here really quick. This is my frustration, okay? We complain too much as a drag racing community. We have a sport that's expensive. You know that when you've entered into the sport, become a fan of the sport, become a driver, whatever aspect you are, you know that drag racing is expensive. We all complain when we open Summit Magazine, when we open, uh, or you call Jerry Bickle, or, you know, Whatever. We're all complaining because it's like, man, why do I have to pay that much for that part? You understand what it takes to go fast. You understand what it takes to get to the next level. You have to understand that your ticket is not like anyone else's. You can go and see the horrible Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You can go and see the horrible Dallas Cowboys. You can go and see the L.A. Dodgers or whoever else it may be. And you're going to pay more than $70 for that ticket unless you're going to sit in the nosebleed. But you are not going to get the chance to walk up to that person and get an autograph, to touch some of their parts, to maybe have the chance to get a tire, to get a clutch disc, to get a piston. You're not going to have that chance. You're not going to have the chance to sit in the dugout with the New York Yankees like you would at an NHR event. You are not going to get the chance to walk right in like you do. So, yes, I get it. You still saw Maybe a little bit. No, I'm not salty at all, but it it just ugh. Still salty about Tampa Bay romping on the Raiders. I swear to God. I'm not yeah. I'm not salty about it. <laughs> but it's it's I just don't understand like I don't understand why that is our biggest like our biggest grief is how many people do we have in the stands? Top fuel one seventy three. This guy's on a roll today. Um you know, Formula One tickets. They're like 200 bucks and people are going formula one is on the move. Like I can honestly say I'm sick of watching cornhole on TV every freaking weekend, but 
I can watch Formula One. I'm getting more into it because it's a different type of motorsport. Like I'd we cannot watch, continue. Like, I'd rather watch electric car drag racing. Hey, after what Tasca told me uh, last week, hey, I might be. You guys might have converted me. I mean, hey, if he lets me ride in one of those, I'm just saying. But yes, beers are expensive at the, you know, but we we know that. Like, if you go to a monster car event or monster truck event, look at how many hundreds of thousands of kids are at those and their parents are still going to buy them that grave digger big blow up thing that they're going to play with for like two weeks and then you, it's going to end up somewhere else yeah you i can mean tell some we, of these people have never had a kid in travel softball travel baseball travel basketball <laughs> or any of those things because softball to get a good bat you're going to spend about four hundred dollars for a bat no a no bat. okay bobby here's another one we complain about racing being expensive, but yet you can go anywhere and even to some of these races. And I guarantee you, you'll see somebody with some brand new Nikes or some brand new Jordans on. Those Jordans cost you $190, but you're complaining about a $70 ticket. Yeah. Now, yeah, I, and, and, and hey, I can honestly say it. I'm one to, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I have a Jordan collection of shoes that I've never worn before. And, and that's fine, but I've worked hard to be able to do that, but I'm not complaining about a $70 ticket. When I want to go to Vegas to watch the golden Knights and go and watch the Raiders, guess what? I understand that it's going to cost me $180 to go and watch the golden Knights play, but guess what? It's entertainment. It's what we do. I know it's going to cost me $170 to go watch my beloved Raiders in that brand new stadium whoop up on any team. I, I get that other than the Chargers. I don't know what happened. That kind of pissed me off, but we won't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> that was well, kind at of least when I was a Raiders but... fan, we could beat the Chargers. <laughs> at least when I was a Raiders <laughs> fan, we, we did that. But here, here let me, let me uh, pose something to you. Uh, All right. You complain about a $75 ticket. But have you ever filled up an SUV with gasoline in California? Let's not talk about it. That's not, we can't even talk about that, Bobby. We don't, we don't want to bring, because I drive an F-150 and I drive an Explorer. I, I have two vehicles. Both, <laughs> you know how much it costs to fill up a tank? And I okay. live in BFE. Exactly. It, it's all, per- there you know it what? is. I, you if, know what? if it's too much for you to spend money, $75 for a ticket, then don't go. Sit at home and watch it on TV. But you do have that option, something you didn't have in the good old days when gasoline was $0.25 cents a gallon. <laughs> there ain't That's no it. such thing as free lunch. <laughs> That's it. There you go. There ain't no such but and, – and right here, KJ, uh, KJ says it perfectly. It's perspective. Like everybody's going to have their opinion. Everybody's allowed to have their opinion, but some opinions I just think are worse than others. And that's what makes the U S the best place. We can all have different opinions, but we all come back. We're all going to talk. We're all going to talk racing. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that's that. Uh, doesn't look like at this point we're going to have Scott on, uh, it may be yeah, some, probably you know, making a run here. Probably yeah. Soon and, and, soon. and that's fine. But I, I think all in all, Bobby, we've had a great show. We've got to see some of the action behind, uh, Billy, man, we, we, like I said, we, we can't thank him enough for what he's doing for the drag racing community. Like I said, that, that this week is drag racing heaven ceremony. Like this is the way drag racing should be. I, I'm just going to call it like it is be mad at me. Tune in next week to tell me how much you think I'm wrong, but it's fine. Uh, my week predictions, like I said, top fuel, Antron Brown, Justin Ashley, final. I Pro stock, win. pro stock, you're going to see the hometown girl. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be an all uh, elite final. I'm going to say you're going to see, you're going to see the hometown girl, Erica, and you're going to have Troy Coughlin battling it out. Um, I think those two, um, I would like to see Angie Smith get a win this weekend. And I think, I think Matt's going to do it. 
I think I'm 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 riding with Matt. Uh, and, and it's a strong shot for those Capco boys, too. I think, you know, they've got a little chip on their shoulder, especially with what's happened with them leading up to this event. Um, bold prediction for me. I don't think it's really bold. I think your final this week in Funny Car, and I think this might upset some people, may take some people by a storm. I don't know. But your Funny Car final this week, J.R. Todd and John Force. Tasca and Caps. All right. Hey, like I said, we 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 all have our opinions. She was testing in Oklahoma. You're right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But who who's who's to think, Bobby, this late in the game that we would still be talking about all the great things that drag racing has to offer? I mean, people said that pro stock was dead. It's alive. Alexis, I like that pick. That's a great pick. You guys, if you want to, if you want to do your picks, please, you can email us to powerhourcp at gmail.com. I will get them listed down and we will let you know, know who wins. Bobby, I think we should figure out how to generate a, a poll for Vegas um, so people can enter in like their own ladders. I don't know if that's possible. Maybe that's something we should talk about on the back end. But I think that'll be cool to, you know, have people be able to generate a ladder. DraftKings, yes. If anyone has any pool in DraftKings or know anyone, tell them to get a hold of us here at the Power Hour. We'd love to have them as a sponsor, marketing partner. And then that way we can all bet on DraftKings and bring a new vendor to this great thing that we call drag racing. Bobby, you rode along with me. You got to sit in the passenger seat. You took the pilot seat a couple of times. When we ran low on gas and had to fill back up, and I need a couple of Z's to catch back up. But I thank you for coming on your own show and being my my co-host tonight, riding with me, rocking, jamming out before, like always. Bobby, what would you like to say in closing? Well, you know, I've just – I grew up in this sport, and I learned to appreciate all of drag racing. I learned to appre- appreciate the intricacies of all of the sport. I learned to appreciate drag racing to an eighth mile. I learned to appreciate drag racing to a quarter mile. I learned to appreciate drag racing to a thousand feet and understood why we went to a thousand feet. I'm not a fan of going backwards just just to go forward. I'm I'm not a fan of slowing cars down just to go a further distance. That that defeats the whole purpose of drag racing. I like seeing cars run as fast as they can, as far as they safely can. But I understand that those that are in the cars, yeah, they're there for our entertainment, but they're also human beings. And to ask them to try to run a quarter mile when we can't get them stopped most of the time at a thousand feet, you know, it, Quarter mile drag racing for the nitro ranks is not coming back. It's not coming back. So get over it. It, it, it is what it is. I just like you know, I like the helmet. To, I like the helmet to helmet collisions and in, in, in football, professional football. That's not coming back. And you know why? So pe- people don't get the uh, the concussions and stuff. And I understand that. That's part of the evolution and making it safer. Just like running to a thousand feet has made drag racing safer. And if there comes a day that we have to go to an eighth mile, then we go to an eighth mile. But we're still running. We're still racing. And just just so you guys know, Wally Parks back in the 1980s was looking at going to a thousand feet. So it, it's not like that hasn't been thought of before. But right now, just look at what you got. Look at what you got. You got drag racing on demand anytime you want it, just about. YouTube, whatever, the internet, you can go there. You don't have to wait for Superstock and Drag Illustrated or National Dragster to come to your mailbox to find out who won the race. You don't have to call the 1-900 Castro line to find out who was the top qualifier. You don't have to wait till, you know, March to watch wide world of sports to find out who won the winter nationals so 
Look at what you're living. Look at what you got and appreciate what you got. The words from Mr. Bobby Bennett himself. Bobby, again, thank you for coming on, being my co-host tonight. It was fun. We had a couple of tear moments, but, you know, hey, it's what it's what drag racing is. It gives you all the emotions, man. It's it's the uh, it's the it's the turkey dinner on Thanksgiving. It's a mix of emotions. And you know what? At the end of it, we all celebrate. We all have fun and we leave the event with a smile on our face. Well, thanks for having so, me on the show. All right. Well, it's probably past your bedtime, so I'm going to let you go and I'm going to wrap this show up. So thanks again, Bobby. Thank you. You guys, that is the man who created this whole thing, Mr. Bobby Bennett. Um, <laughs> Lee is saying Bobby is still talking. Lee's there. Like I said, you guys go and watch the Monday Morning Racer. Check him out. He's going to have great content from this week-long event. He's there live on the grounds. If you see him, say what's up to the Monday Morning Racer, the man with the glasses. We appreciate him for what he does behind the scenes to help us out. And just like Bobby Bennett Competition Plus, you guys go check that out. If you haven't done already, please like and share this. Let's keep this talk about drag racing going. There's more shows where we talk drag racing on. And go and hit the subscribe on YouTube. Like they say, at 40K, we should have a lot more than that. So let's keep going. Uh, and supporting that thank you tom for saying a great show man we're trying we're trying to grow this give you guys this late night tv feel i mean you you turn on espn every day and get to talk whatever they're talking whichever sport it is this is your undisputed this is your first take this is your college game day we give it to you live here tuesday night competition plus power hour usually it's me and the monday morning racer and bobby bennett comes in with his own segment like Stephen A. Smith would, and get off of my track. He tells it like it is, just like I did. Uh, Stan, we thank you for being a listener, giving us your feedback. Top Fuel 173, Mopar Man, you guys are always on here. We appreciate you guys. Uh, this week, I will be um, talking to some of the crew guys on my show that is in the Groove Podcast, Slam and Sam. is me. You can find me on Facebook under Slam and Sam. You can find me under Instagram, YouTube, Facebook at outlaw performance ent outlaw performance ent that is my stuff please go over like subscribe to youtube it helps us out so much you guys and we want to thank you guys for coming on this show to billy meyer thank you for what you've done what you were doing and like i said this week is drag racing's heaven week um just a beautiful event that they've got going down there at the texas motorplex so if you're in that area and you have time where you can get out there and get you some racing in some great food festivals uh merchandise help out the people in the drag racing community get there and be a part of that event it's the first one it's the i'm calling it it's the granddaddy of them all so you guys thank you again to all of our sponsors here on the competition plus power hour that is right we want to thank first and foremost competition plus apparel for all that they do the swag that you need to Jerry Bickle Racing, we thank you so much. But again, this has been another great episode that you have entered into the jungle. You've made it through. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Till next week, next Tuesday, you guys keep the pedal to the metal. In the race for quality, there is no finish line. Jerry Bickle Race Cars is a one-stop chassis shop for drag racing performance parts and race components. For over 50 years, Jerry Bickle Race Cars has been an essential part of racers' plans for building world champion race cars. Our parts department is stocked with every part a racer might need. Log on to jerrybickle.com for more information. We build anything with doors. jerrybickle.com.